Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video we're going to consider the question why does an AC waveform take the shape of a sine wave? Now in the previous video in this series we looked at the machine that you can see on the screen in front of you now, a very simple single loop AC generator. You can tell it's an AC generator because it's got slip rings on the end of the output there. We then took our simple machine and we took a cross section of it, such as you can see on the screen now. And what we're going to do now is transfer into a slightly different software, still looking at a cross section of our simple machine, but this time we're going to see exactly how it produces a sine wave. So now we're looking at a slightly different set of operations. Uh, I'm using the excellent Desmos uh, com graphing website which is a truly spectacular uh, piece of uh, software on the internet free for use if you ever uh, have a hankering to draw graphs and I'm going to use this to illustrate why we produce a sine wave from an AC machine. So on the screen you can see we've got kind of a representation of our cross section. We've got our north magnetic pole up here, we've got our south magnetic pole down here and here you can see uh, the conductors of our machine. So here we've got uh, one of the conductors it would loop around the back there away from us and here's the other conductor so we're looking at a cross section of this. These black lines here represent uh, the lines of magnetic flux going from the north to the south pole and what we're going to do now is try and figure out where this sine wave comes from. So an important thing to bear in mind is that at the, the fraction of time, the moment of time that we've got here that we've kind of frozen, you can see that the conductor of this travels again uh, in an anti-clockwise direction as we spin the loop around in that way, you can see that for this moment in time, this brief moment, the conductor is actually travelling in the same direction as the lines of magnetic flux, just for a fraction of a moment of time. It's going in the same direction as the lines of magnetic flux. And what that means is that actually it doesn't produce any electricity. It has to pass through the lines of magnetic flux. It has to cut through them in this direction to produce electricity. At this point it's producing no current. However, as we start to move the loop around a little bit, the conductor starts to cut through the lines of magnetic flux more and more close to 90 degrees. So by the time we've got to this point, it's starting to cut through the lines of magnetic flux closer to 90 degrees. So we can actually map that out. So when we weren't cutting through the lines of magnetic flux at all, we had zero current. But if we shift the angle, so it's cutting through the lines of magnetic flux a little bit more clearly, a little bit more directly, we start to produce some current inside the conductor. And actually we can map that across. All we've done is just drawn a straight line from the middle of the conductor and just made a point here. So if this is at say about 15 degrees uh, and we marked 15 degrees here, we could join that point up to show how the current is rising as it gets closer and closer to cutting through here at 90 degrees. As this continues, to get closer and closer to cutting through 90, you can see we're getting a higher and higher uh, current being produced until we get to this point here, where we are cutting through the lines of magnetic flux at the absolute most efficient. We're cutting through it at 90 degrees. We've reached our maximum value of current flowing inside that conductor. As the loop continues to rotate, you can see there that the conductor starts to cut through the lines of magnetic flux further and further away from 90 degrees. The angle is getting uh, more and more oblique. And as we get back to this point here, you can see that in the conductor, as we get to this point, the current is back down to zero again. So we've got no current flowing through the conductor as it cuts through the lines of magnetic flux at zero degrees. So we've got no current flowing again over here. Now, we saw in the earlier video that as we continue to rotate, the direction of the current flow changes. Well, let's see if that continues to happen here. As we go uh, past the zero degrees cutting through uh, the lines of magnetic flux and we get down to this point here, you can see we're still producing a current. Now, this is the point where people start to get a little bit confused because here we're in the negative part of the graph. And normally when we think of a negative number, it, it means there's a lack of something or a debt of something. But that's not the case here. We've still got a current that is continuing to rise and the fact that it's in the negative part of the graph just indicates that the electricity 
has changed its direction. So when we get down to the bottom bit of the graph, and the conductor is cutting through the lines of magnetic flux at 90 degrees again, you can see we've got another peak. So we've still got the most amount of current flowing at this point, but now it's flowing the other way around the circuit as we saw in the earlier part of the video. So if we now continue this back to its starting position, we can see that actually we get back to zero degrees and uh, sorry we get back to cutting through the lines of magnetic flux at zero degrees and we have absolutely no current flowing. So you can see the shape there is this lovely curvy shape and this shape is what's called a sinusoidal waveform and you may know it as a sine wave and this is the waveform that electricity takes and this is going to be really important as we continue to delve into AC theory to understand exactly why um, certain graphs behave in the way that they do. And we're going to come back to this graph and use it to illustrate other points as well. Now what we can do is we can actually start this uh, graph running. We can get it so that it's continually spinning around and you can see that once it gets back to its starting point, the waveform just starts again. And as you can probably appreciate, as this spins around faster and faster, you'll get more and more waveforms, which uh, helps to lead us quite nicely into subjects of frequency and periodic time in a future video. The final kind of mystery of this video is why do we call that waveform a sine wave? Well, you may have uh, seen uh, information when you're at school doing your studies about trigonometry, which relates to triangles, and you may have come across that expression sine. And if you remember, the sine of uh, an angle, uh, it relates to right angle triangles, and it is the ratio of the opposite to the hypotenuse. So where do we have triangles connected with this uh, lovely curvy waveform here? It might be difficult to spot any triangles in here and why we call this a sine wave. Well, let's just bring the uh, cursor back to this point here. So if you look carefully, there is actually a triangle hidden inside uh, this circle here. Can you spot it? So it's actually a triangle that goes from the center of the circle along this line here to the center of the conductor and then drops down to here and goes back again. So there is a right angle triangle buried inside there. So there's our triangle that's hidden inside our rotating shape that we've created here. So the fact that this triangle is hidden inside here is really significant. So let's make this really accurate now. I wanna make this angle here 30 degrees. So I'm gonna turn that into 30 degrees now. So I'll just type that in over here. So that angle is now at exactly 30 degrees. And what that means is that uh, we could actually figure out what the uh, value of the sine of that angle is. So the easiest way to do it is on our calculator. So bring up our lovely Casio FX85 GT Plus and we'll see what the sine of 30 is. So the sine of 30 is one half or 0.5. Now, why is that significant? Well, one thing that we haven't spoken about with this uh, triangle is that the length of this side, the hypotenuse, is one unit long. So it's just one long. Now, if you want to find the sine of uh, the angle of a right angle triangle, you take the opposite and you divide it by the hypotenuse. But because the hypotenuse is always going to be one in this triangle, whatever uh, position of rotation that we're in, we can see uh, that actually the value of the opposite will always give us the value of the sine of this angle. So that means that if we measure the distance from here to here, we would find that that distance would be 0.5. And so likewise, the distance from here to here is 0.5, which means that at this point, the waveform has reached half its height. So when this is at 30 degrees, the sine of 30 is 0.5. So the current waveform is at 0.5 of its maximum height. Uh, and actually we should be able to confirm that you see there. So we can see that the Y value here, the height of that position is 0.5, which is the sine of the angle here of the triangle. If you're not sure uh, about sines, cosines, tangents and trigonometry, please watch uh, another one of my videos that explains uh, those trigonometric identities in a bit more detail. But let's just 
change the position of this just a, a couple more times. So if we now change this so that we're at 45 degrees, uh, so we're around to 45 degrees now, uh, we can see there that we've got uh, a height of 0 0.707, and that number is really important in electrical science, 0 0.707, because it actually helps us uh, to understand the relationship between an AC waveform and a DC waveform, but more on that in another video. And you can see here that the waveform is now at 0 0.707 of its maximum height. And if we go to our calculator and we ask the calculator what is the sine of 45, so sine of 45 is uh, root 2 over 2, which if you change that into its decimal form, you can see there is 0 0.707. And then if we continue to rotate our uh, conductor in our generator, and we move that around now so that it is at uh, 90 degrees. So here we've got our maximum current being produced. So here we've got effectively the current is at uh, 1 at its maximum value. 1 there, the y value is 1. So we're at 90 degrees. So if we ask our calculator what the sine of 90 is, once this has reached 90 degrees, we can see there we get one. So in other words, that one just represents it at its maximum value. And that is why we call this beautiful waveform that's produced by a rotating piece of machinery. That is the exact reason why we refer to this as a sine wave. So if we just prove one more time that as this uh, turns around and around and around, we get this absolutely beautiful sine wave being produced and it all relates to the fact that we've got a right angle triangle buried inside that machine at all times. So I hope this video uh, has been of some assistance to you and hopefully it will help you to understand in a little bit more detail some wave diagrams and phasor diagrams that we'll be looking at in a future video. Thank you very much.